What's up guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit. Recently I made a video discussing why Fire Emblem Echoes will be very different from Fire Emblem Awakening and Fire Emblem Fates. In this video, we'll be discussing some new information that has been revealed, giving us further insight into what Fire Emblem Echoes will have in store. If you haven't seen the first video on this topic, be sure to check it out and get caught up to speed. And also, I want to give a big thank you to all of you that made that video a huge success. You're awesome. It was also the first time in this channel that I've literally felt overwhelmed by all the awesome comments and couldn't get to them all, so thanks everyone. So the official UK Nintendo site was recently updated with some new screenshots from Fire Emblem Echoes, and we've also got some more images from the Valentia complete version of the game, some information from a Famitsu feature on the game, and even more screenshots that were posted to the Nintendo Hong Kong Facebook page. In this first screenshot, we can see the Fire Emblem Echoes world map featuring both Alm and Celica present near what appears to be Zofia Castle. During the story of Gaiden, and what will apparently be the case for Echoes, the two main characters will be separated at times with their own individual groups, so be prepared to have two separate armies. The window shows the number of units in Celica's party, 8, the overall troop strength, 568, and the current location, which is Mountainside Path. A big thanks to Serenus Forest for all the translations. The second screenshot shows Celica using the spell Angel against a Revenant monster, which Gaiden fans will remember as being effective against them. Curiously enough, we've already seen that Alm's Leaven Sword in Echoes does not have any uses, thus returning to the unbreakable weapons that we had in Fire Emblem Fates and the original Gaiden, but her Angel Spellbook appears to have a 4 next to it. In another screenshot from the UK site, we can see the attack menu before Celica attacks an enemy monster, revealing that the HP cost from Fire Emblem Gaiden's magic system will actually be returning to Fire Emblem Echoes, which is what I believe the 4 to be next to the Angel Spellbook. In Gaiden, the Angel spell costed 4 HP to cast, which is consistent with the 4 seen in the screenshot and further cements this theory. This disproves what I said about that aspect in the last video, and since there simply wasn't enough information revealed yet, I should not have made that assumption, so apologies for that one. Also in this screenshot, we can see Celica's 80% hit rate, which is consistent with Fire having a fixed 80% hit rate in Gaiden, regardless of the spellcaster's stats. So it's looking more and more like Echoes will be bringing back the entirety of Gaiden's magic system. The other thing to mention here is the Grave Terrain, which provides a 60 point boost, presumably to the Avoid stat. Once again, this is straight out of Gaiden. There's also a No symbol on top of the Foe's Terrain bonus. In Gaiden, magic spells do not factor in the Foe's Terrain bonus, so it's not a huge surprise to see this returning as well. The next two screenshots show a character, likely Tobin from Alm's Party, changing to the Archer class. The stat boosts from class changing also appear to abide by the rule set in Gaiden, as opposed to the change being equal to the difference in stats between the new and old class that we have seen in other Fire Emblem games. In Gaiden, if the unit's current stats are lower than the stats of the new class, they will gain stats. But if their stats are higher than those of the new class, no change or loss in stats will occur. And we've also got a screenshot of Alm raiding a chest, which will be found in the depths of dungeons just like they were in Gaiden. Legend of Zelda, anyone? We recently got some images from the Valentia art book, which is included in the Valentia complete version of the game, alongside an audio CD. So far though, we haven't gotten any announcements of a special edition version for us in the West. If we do end up getting one though, I certainly hope that Nintendo has learned their lesson from the Fire Emblem Fates special edition fiasco. But I'm a bit cynical about this, considering just about every limited edition or special item they're releasing these days is heavily scalped. They definitely need a hard limit of one item per household, so scalpers can't buy them all up. Also, why would they have limited pre-orders? If more people want to pre-order the game, just make more copies. I realize that pre-orders can be cancelled on a whim, and that could potentially present a loss to Nintendo, but why can't they just send out the cancelled pre-orders to stores and produce less copies for further shipments or restocks? That's probably a debate for another day, though. The pages from the art book appear to depict the kingdoms of Zofia on the left and Regal on the right, the two main kingdoms in the Valentian War. In the second March issue of Weekly Famitsu, an introduction to Echoes was featured and provides us with some new details about the game. We've got a screenshot here of Alm using his Leaven Sword again, this time doing 15 damage. In Gaiden, the Leaven Sword always did 15 damage. Last time, we saw him do 14 points of damage to an Armor Knight, and the base resistance of an Armor Knight is 1, so that knight has exactly as much resistance as one would expect if nothing has been changed from Gaiden. This also further implies that the Leaven Sword's base damage will in fact be staying 15 in Echoes. It also appears that Gaiden's minimum damage dealt being 1 damage will be returning in Echoes too. In the middle box, the author discusses Fire Emblem's classic battle system and confirms that the game will feature casual mode, where fallen characters return after a battle, and classic mode, where fallen characters stay gone. 
This has been the case for the more recent entries in the series, so these modes will be making their return in Echoes too, which is interesting. Gaiden allowed players to resurrect characters a limited number of times by visiting certain Lionhead statues, so it's unclear if this system will be making a comeback. Given Echoes' track record so far though, I'm sure it will. On the fourth page we learn that Archers and Echoes have the bow range plus one attribute, possibly a skill? Thus giving them a range of one to three when using a standard bow. We knew this from the battle snippet we talked about last time, but it's interesting to think about units having certain attributes. Could skills be making a return? With how faithful Echoes is shaping up to be, it's unlikely, but what could they have meant by that? The Cavalier has an attribute too, horseback, but it merely looks to be a weakness or movement type identifier. So maybe these are just class attributes. Next we see Tobin about to change class to a Cavalier. In the bottom screen we can see that the author has highlighted a curious item, a carrot. The most obvious explanation is that it's related to the food command accessible when moving a character. Perhaps characters can eat food to temporarily boost stats like in Fates? Or maybe this heals a small amount of HP. Only time will tell. The final screenshot showcases Alm exploring the Thief Shrine, which is the very first dungeon in Gaiden. On the bottom screen is a handy map showing the player's current location, as well as a list of the 10 current units in Alm's party. Perhaps you can only have a maximum of 10 units in your party at a time, split across two teams? So then it would be about 20 units to train per playthrough? That seems about right, honestly, considering most other Fire Emblem games tend to be around 13 to 15 units maximum deployable per chapter. Another thing I'd like to mention in this video is that odds are there will be no combat triangle in Echoes. We've already seen how much of a 1 to 1 remake Echoes is shaping up to be, and Gaiden did not have the combat triangle when it came to battle mechanics. It's something that we overlooked last time when we checked out the battle forecast. There were no indicators for the combat triangle advantage or disadvantage, so it really does seem like it will be absent in Echoes. Another thing to point out is that Thieves and Gaiden were brigands that used axes, and aside from them there really weren't any actual axe users in Fire Emblem Gaiden, thus making it challenging for intelligent systems to reintroduce the combat triangle, as it would be incredibly unbalanced, and they'd have to add a whole bunch more axe wielders into the team roster, and from what we've seen of the class changing options, it might be unlikely. However, it does seem that they are retconning Griffin Riders into Valentia, since Mila's faction has what appear to be Griffin Riders in the mural seen in the original trailer. I will also point out that the second ever Fire Emblem remake, New Mystery of the Emblem, that we did not receive here in the West, there's an awesome fan translation though, gave us new Axe users alongside the original ones that were present in Fire Emblem 1 and Fire Emblem 3 Book 1, even though Fire Emblem 3 Book 2 had no playable Axe users. So perhaps it's possible that we'll get them. What does seem fairly concrete though is the lack of combat triangle indicators before battle, so it seems, based upon what we know so far, that the combat triangle will likely still be out. I also want to point out that Gaiden was the first Fire Emblem game to feature a second promotion for each class, resulting in third tier units. This was brought back in Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, with classes like True Blade and Gold Knight being promotions of the Swordmaster and Paladin classes respectively. So even if we don't have any recruitable axe units, there will still be some more classes than the one tier of promotions to play with. There was also one of you guys that paid extra attention to the original Echoes reveal trailer and found that the mysterious dark haired character that we got artwork of looks to be a soldier in the Regalian Empire. I guess that's the reason for the Roman head wreath thing going on? So the assumption is he'll be an enemy unit that becomes recruitable, or maybe just an enemy general that has plot relevance, enough so to warrant the artwork we got of him. Lastly, Nintendo Hong Kong has posted some Chinese screenshots of the game on their Facebook page. The first is a new screenshot that shows Alm and Celica running towards a meadow. Interestingly enough, the game's logo is featured here, so this scene may either be the game's title screen or an introductory sequence in the beginning of the game. It also seems to lead into the second screenshot we have of Almond Celica surrounded by flowers, so it's likely a part of the game's intro. The last screenshot of the batch is from the beginning of the game and looks to be right after the party has cleared the Thief Shrine. What's interesting about this screenshot is that Alm is equipped with an iron sword, whereas in the original Gaiden, his first sword was just a regular sword before he received his Levin sword. This has been updated, considering recent games feature very specific weapon types, not quite as generic as a plain sword. Based on everything we've just discussed, I think it's fair to say that Fire Emblem Echoes is going to be an immensely faithful remake. It seems at this point that newer mechanics like pushing, shoving, unit skills, the avatar, and children are not likely to find their way into Echoes. I know Echoes will be an amazing game regardless, but I do wonder if perhaps the lack of these newer mechanics will result in an antiquated gameplay experience. Hopefully not. My intention with the last video was to help anyone wondering about Echoes to realize that it will be unlikely for it to retain the fan service and dating aspects that Awakening and Fates had, and I still absolutely stand by this, considering each piece of information we get 
those features seem less and less likely. If you made it this far into the video guys, be sure to comment Echoes or leave me a comment below letting me know your thoughts about Echoes and how you feel about how faithful it seems it will be. Are you excited? Are you not excited? Be sure to let me know. For any of your Fire Emblem needs, please check out SerenusForest.net for extensive guides on every Fire Emblem game as well as some very active forums. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more Nintendo, retro, and tech content, be sure to subscribe to Lucky Crit today, and I'll see you guys next time.